guys, it's Mike. I'm here with Ali Petit, the owner of the world famous Red Bar, or what used to be the world famous Red Bar. Still world, world famous, but I think we lack a physical structure <laughs> at this moment. But uh, there was a devastating fire, and now we're going to hear straight from the source what's coming up for Red Bar, the next generation. So it's the night before Valentine's Day, was it? Uh, well, when, yes, when, well, the morning uh, yeah. before uh, Wednesday, the, the 13th of February. Got the call at 5:30 a.m. and got it at six, and you know, watch the watch the fire basically, and watch the fire department. More importantly, do an amazing job at saving Green Beach. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, they really did do an amazing job of containing it, but it was such an old structure that I mean, it just went up fast. Yeah, we had no chance really. I mean, the building's built on stilt. It was yeah, really windy that morning, and um, I mean, it just was like a match. Let you light up in a matchbox. It was a traumatic event for our community because our community doesn't have a lot of architectural heritage. And if mm. there was one building that defines what little history we do have as a community, it was that building. What do you know about that building? Yeah, clearly it's a sentimental location, uh, home of the Red Bar, but known as the Butler Store since 1939. Yep. And uh, for me, that was always the uh, you know, to, to be able to, to run my restaurant in that historical building was so important to me and to us. And uh, so, so obviously it's no longer here, but in spirit will always be. And the, the, the memory that it has uh, brought to people, you just can't measure that. And you were in that location how many years? Well, we opened in 95, so, so. we were going into our 25th season, 24 years under our belt. So, um, you And you know, employed... Not just a lot of locals, like how many locals were employed? Yeah, you know, we had about 90 full-time employees. Okay, but I will say that the locals I knew had actually shaped their lives around your business. In other words, a lot of them had physically moved to where they could mm -hmm. be within walking distance of the bar. And so that was a traumatic event for a lot of your team. You know, uh, as I was watching the, the, the place burn, uh, my heart was, I was, that's all I could think of. The staff thinking, oh my God, our lives is, is so shaken up at, at, at watching this so clearly some of the employees uh, had never worked for anyone else yeah and started. so how many years like say had had Renee and some of those guys been in the I'd bar Stacy Georgie uh, 24 years yeah. uh, Keegan 23 years family uh, family. family I mean grew up in the place literally yeah. uh, so so now that said there was a fortuitous decision that you made say a decade ago and you were thinking about potentially creating another red bar somewhere else, and that led you to do something that then became pivotal in all of this. And what was that? Uh, getting blueprints on the building. Yeah. I love the location so much, and uh, I always felt that fire would be an Achilles tendon and the hurricane. Yeah. So we thought that if for any reason that could ever happen, we would have this amazing blueprint of this floor plan that if I was to build a restaurant anywhere, give and take a few uh, uh, issues, I would rebuild it just like it. I mean, it's just a marvelous floor plan for a great flow of a restaurant, creating an intimate atmosphere, yet, you know, uh, covering a, quite a bit of space. I mean, we sat over 200 people in the place, so. Yeah, and so the floor plans are there. The lot is cleared, as we can see. What do you think are next steps? I mean, what's coming? People want to know what's what's happened to my beloved Red Bar? Yeah, what's, yeah. What's, well, what's uh, uh, we, um, we, um, we have a permit. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are working with different builders because mm -hmm. clearly that's going to be the probably the most difficult Picking part. the right builder, yeah. You bet. You know. So, but we're real, really close. We have several wonderful local builders that have showed interest in doing the the job. And uh, in times of the essence here, I mean, we we need sure. whoever commits. Most important question is how fast can you do it and how well can you build it, of course, but the speed is essential. And so will it, for all intents and purposes, be the same, although I did see a quote where you said we're going to have better bathrooms, mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, is it, for all intents and purposes, going to be the same layout? Exactly the same. As a matter of fact, the front room when you enter the building will be built on stilt. Mm -hmm. We'll use reclaimed woods for the floors. Uh, it'll have the same dimensions, the same small doors that take you from one room to the other where you're always doing the crab walk <laughs> when you go to the restaurant on a busy night. So we are respecting every aspect of the restaurant except those bathrooms will, will, will be a lot more uh, friendly with the, 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 the space. Sure. Uh, but otherwise the rest, that's going to be our hardest commitment or, or most important commitment is to to rebuild it like like it, like it was. Now I will say that one thing that will help in that effort, uh, I had heard ages ago that your father, Louis, 
um, is something of a yard sale connoisseur. And I did not know that I necessarily, I, I didn't not believe it or believe mm -hmm. it, but until I had a yard sale. And then Louis Sr. comes walking up my driveway at 6.15 in the morning and he bought uh, mm -hmm. ACDC cassette <laughs> tapes and I mean just all sorts of weird stuff. But from what I understand, he's almost got like the Raiders of the Lost Ark vault of all this cool, eclectic, bohemian stuff. Is that true? Uh, very true. Very true. Yeah. My father, since the early 70s, uh, was always sort of a hobby, lifestyle type of thing, uh, ramaging through flea markets, uh, garage sales and such. And uh, clearly we've used uh, that to create sure. a, a wonderful business. And uh, my dad relentlessly collects Two weeks before the fire, he was unloading a car full in a storage unit, which is a 30 by 30, so almost a thousand square feet. Was It's so full of things, I was telling Dad. <laughs> when are we ever gonna say, need and, this? And he, and he just <laughs> responded to me, he said, son, you don't want to look for it when you need it. Brilliant. Very, very philosophical. Well, I think word. that's the biggest thing that I think a lot of people were concerned about is because they love the old well. French posters and they love the old concert, but he's got an archive of this and that's how you guys were able to successfully duplicate with, with Louis Louis as well. I mean, it still has that cool, local, uh, uniquely petite vibe. Thank you. And exactly right. I mean, and that, as I said, that's the part we actually are excited, my father and I, especially we, we do the, the decoration together. and. Uh, you know, we look forward to that. I think it's so exciting to me, and I can't wait for people to see the pieces that we have. Uh, I, I know a lot, a lot of folks think that, how are they gonna replace it? But I can assure you that we have just a large amount of things. The thing we won't be able to replace is, the, you know, for instance, there, there were Jabos drums that were hanging on the seat. Sure. There's mementos that are just, you know, things that belong to Dread Clampet, and a sure. variety of personal mementos, but, you know, life is, it, it, it's, you know, you can't look back, and we're looking forward, and uh, and then, I'm, I'm sure people will be very pleased with what we're going to put out there. Well, we'll build new memory about that. And of course, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Red Bar is such an icon, not just here in, in, in South Walton, but just throughout the United States and even around the world. And, and we're so excited. It's literally, I think, going to be one of those things that rises out of the ashes. And I even told Louis, I think that day, I'm like, you know, can you just imagine the reopening party? And I think that's what's on everybody's <laughs> mind. So I, I know that there's no such thing as timelines when it comes to this. But if you had to speculate, if you had to guess, when do we see the new Red Yeah, Bar? you know, um, uh, we are shooting for October. Wow. So, yeah, not, what year? Uh, now, yeah, what year? Should I pin no, you down? Year, yeah, yeah, okay, no. all right. We, 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 are, we, we, are, we, we feel that the structure is a very straightforward structure to build. There's nothing really intricate. We're actually welcoming a little imperfections. Mm -hmm. So um, we feel confident that six months for a, 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 a good builder uh, to, 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 to have that time frame to put it together, wow. we, we feel confident it can be done. So clearly time will tell. We need something to shoot for us, and I think the people out there also would like to have something to shoot for. And, sure. uh, and let's put it down. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm going out on the limb here. Uh, uh, well, I will opening. say this: that one of the things that uh, people can do, uh, you guys. Uh, through the community support, uh, the first thing they did was really raise money for employees to help employees who were expecting to be able to go to work that night and take home tips. You know, I mean, that was a, a and, and, and people who had worked there for 20 years, that was a difficult thing. So for the community to come together and to be able to provide some, some relief, but that need still goes on. I mean, you certainly placed a lot of people and all that, but that said, one of the best ways you can support Red Bar is going to Red Bar's website and uh, buying some of the uh, Let's Rebuild t-shirts uh, that uh, we worked with you guys on, and um, I think that's an easy way to support Red Bar even when you can't come here and enjoy a mimosa or a, uh, some crab cakes in the, uh, the, the high season. That's a great way to support Red Bar. Without a doubt, and, and thank you, Mike. Thank Not you, sure. and you people at Thirty38.com. You guys truly stepped up to the plate for us. Uh, we never expected anything, but we humbly accepted it. And uh, you know, twenty-five thousand dollars, I believe, is what we raised on your end, and and, and over a hundred thousand dollars altogether. Thank you, everyone out there that contributed so far beyond what we ever we expected. Nothing, just. A pat on the back and a hug was all we, we, we expected from be, and we got that and so much more, and uh, I can't, can't say it enough. Thank you. Well, we can't wait for the grand reopening party, <laughs> so love you, buddy. Good luck love with everything. Love you too, Mike. Thank and, you. Uh, thank you for uh, making sure that this institution that's become so integral with our community stays alive and, and uh, going for future generations. Thank you, and that's our commitment. All right. <laughs> Bye, so guys. Long.